So the record company wasn't sure if we were developing in the correct way. They wanted us to be more like bad company and not so much like this weird thing that we were becoming. Bytor and the Snow Dog, what the hell was that all about? With Bytor and the Snow Dog, that was the start of writing in more of a thematic, multi-piece idea. And then with Crest of Steel, we did the whole side, the Fountain of Lamnath, and the Necromancer was kind of like that. It was the start of those longer pieces. Neil had come up with this concept, and we had to put it all together and make it work. And it seemed like just an evolution of where they were going. I thought it had amazing potential. It's a dark record, but it was certainly a good record, I thought. But that view wasn't shared by everybody. I know we played Crest of Steel once for Paul Stanley. We just got it. We played it in our van for him one night. And you could see that he just, he didn't get it. A lot of people didn't get it. <laughs> we wondered if we even got it. I think we were pretty high when we made a lot of that record. <laughs> and it sounds like it to me. My eyes have just been opened. Caress of Steel was not well received by the record company. It was not well received by our agents. Everything took an awful downturn, and it was off the crest of a wave, too, because we were so in love with what we'd done, you know? We were so into it and so proud of it. When Crest of Steel pretty much met a deaf ear, the ensuing tour, we were opening acts on smaller tours and playing backwater clubs, and we called it at the time the Down the Tubes tour.